everybody. <laughs> How's everybody going, doing out there? <laughs> Happy almost Thanksgiving. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just seeing if we're live on Facebook too. Cutting your grocery bill down. We are doing, this is Brittany said, we're doing a live today on cutting your grocery bill. And we're going to be talking about, um, you know, shopping. And this is a perfect time to talk about it. When we're talking about all the holidays coming up and talking about kind of how to be an expert shopper. We're going to talk about some ways to stay on track, cut costs to a minimum. We're going to be talking about um, helping you kind of get more control over your finances. And why is that important? Because, you know, if you save money on groceries, you might be able to buy something else that you want or for somebody else. And um, I think part of this, how this kind of fits into the bariatric surgery world is sometimes people think that buying groceries that are, um, I'm going to say healthier, okay, so fresh produce, fresh, fresh meat, fresh, all of that. Um, sometimes people think it's more expensive, but it doesn't have to be. And so we're going to be talking about all of this. So, kind of get started. And GC's with us. Hello, GC. Hi, GC. <laughs> Brenda, I have bad news. We're not live on Facebook, but that's okay. We can upload it after. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. No, <laughs> Nothing's. <it's> <laughs> Sometimes these things happen. We just don't know why. Um, well, we're going to get started. And I think the very first thing we're going to talk about before, I actually have 10 different ways to save. And we're going to kind of talk about a few things before we talk about those 10 things. And really, I think the first thing is setting a grocery budget. How many of mm -hmm. you have a grocery budget? I do. Let us know. Do you, Brittany? I do. Um, I've noticed that sometimes I have to adjust it, though, on certain times of the year, like, uh, you know, around the holidays, whenever more people are going to be over at the house, that obviously means more food. Um, so I might have to increase it by, like, $50 each visit. But I'm also one of those people that only go to the grocery store every two weeks, maybe less. I don't go to the grocery store every day. <laughs> I just don't wow. do that. <laughs> Me either, Brittany. And you know, too, I kind of noticed the other day I went and got groceries for this week because we're going to two different big parties. And I ended up picking a few extra things up and I was like, wow, two hundred bucks for like just a little bit of hardly anything I felt like. It's just mm -hmm. crazy. So um, one thing that I kind of researched was, um, you know, the savings of even $100 a month. I was looking at how much people can set their their budgets for. I yeah. thought that would be really interesting to talk about. So we're going to talk about that. But also, you know, when you're talking about saving, like even $100 a month could add up to $1,200 a year. Mm -hmm. And $150 a month could add up to $1,800 a year. So, like, what could you do with $1,200 or $1,800? And would you really miss it? Because $100 is really only $25 a week, you know? um 25 to 30 dollars a week savings and think about what you could do with all that extra money so um, i'm talking about that and i think the u.s department of agriculture i whenever i research this creates monthly food plans that you can use for guidance for grocery shopping um, and estimated average cost of nutrients home prepared meals snacks by kind of like age and gender and um, broken into different categories like thrifty or low cost versus moderate cost and then just being liberal, like just not really worrying about what you're spending. There are actually reports out on that, which I found interesting. So a low cost plan, like if you were doing a meal plan that was kind of more low cost for um, a family of two defined as like a male and a female ages 19 to 50, so that's two people, um, would be $484.80 per month, which is $121 a week. For a moderate cost, $600 a month, which is $150 a week. And liberal plan, $750 per month or $187 per week. And I can kind of copy this and put this in our chat box. I just felt like that was interesting. Anybody want to mm -hmm. say, I can say I probably spend 
on average probably it's a lot i feel like i feel like it's a lot it's probably about two hundred dollars 150 to 200 dollars and it's just me and my husband <laughs> are you saying a month or every time you go every two weeks that I that's go. about what i spend and that's it's just me and my husband it seems more liberal than what these estimates are. So I was kind of, I was kind of interested in knowing that. And I yeah. think really, I just kind of go in. I don't really, I have a budget, but I don't really, um, how can I say this? I don't really stick to it as well as I probably should have. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the little report that I just, I kind of typed it in there for you guys um, to have. I just find it kind of interesting. Anybody else want to comment on what theirs is? Like, how um, much they Well, I just have a question. So is that you said, I'm sorry, you said this already, but I just want to say it again in case someone missed it. That's for a family of four? Or is that... Two. Oh, oh, okay. So it is a family and of two. Defined, I'm typing it as a male and female ages 19 to 50. And that was the U.S. Department of Agriculture is who I got that information off of when I was researching this. I just thought it was interesting because, like, I kind of wondered if I was average or over average. But based on this, I think I'm spending probably more than I need to. And actually, we get we get a lot of our meat. We butcher our meat. So, like, mm -hmm. we have our own cows. I have, a, I have a huge garden, so I have lots of stuff from there. And I'm thinking... Where do I spend it on? That includes not only our groceries, though, too. I don't know about you, but I, like, encapsulate birthday gifts and a lot of other stuff into that, too, though. Like, Yeah, I'm in between I'm low and on. moderate. I, I would say I'm in between low and moderate. Because it's $600 per month. So, I, I would say, like, between four and $600. It just, but it also depends. See, like, for, for me, I don't know about you, Brenda, but... There's, I, it's only a household of two. We don't have any kids. Um, Brenda does have kids. They just don't live at home with her. <laughs> They're grown. Um, but, I mean, you know, little things add up, too, that you don't buy every two weeks. Like toilet paper, paper towels, laundry detergent, uh, even hair, you know, shampoo and conditioner, toothpaste. Like, stuff like that that I wouldn't consider food items. Um, but you still have to buy them, and I, I would say we probably buy those, like, once a month, maybe once every other month, because, like I said, it's only the two of us, so we're not going through, you know, a bunch of laundry detergent or paper towels and, like, paper goods, if, if that makes sense. 100%, yeah, and I don't know if they're including those kind of things. It didn't really say in the report, because I think that's interesting. A lot of those things you don't really call groceries, but they are. And then yeah, also, like I said. Yeah, it's still household stuff that you need, you know. Yeah, and sometimes I include, like, gift, gifts and, like, like Christmas time I'm buying extra things because I'm buying right. nothing paper, stuff like that. So that kind of adds up, so I kind of included that. It looks like Tammy has something here, too. She says, I'm in Ontario, Canada. My food bill is around one twenty five a week for two people. I buy fresh food. Everything is expensive here in Canada. That's wow. about what I buy too. And um and I mean I, I primarily buy my groceries from Aldi. I'm not sure if there's Aldi in Canada or not, but I'm sure there's something similar to it. Um and it, in my opinion, that's it's one of the cheapest places or I shouldn't say cheap, affordable places to shop. And I, that's primarily why I do it is because I can get a lot for two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars every time I go. It makes a difference where you shop, and that's I think one of the things that we're going to be talking about. But I think, like where you decide to go, makes like it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. So let's start talking about the different things. The first thing here I have is meal planning, and I think um, I know I've talked about recently when we did a class on meal prepping. Um, a piece of paper or a book I was looking here. Like, this is my life, you guys probably. <laughs> I like have so much stuff written down on my notebook, and I keep a notebook with me all the time. And it's a grocery, it's kind of ongoing grocery list so that I can remember the things that I need. Because if you go to a grocery store and you just start picking things, I don't know about you guys, but I end up getting a lot more than I need. 
some uh, meal planning. And she also says, we have grocery store called No Frills and Basic Foods, Food Basics, and even these stores have become expensive post-COVID. Yeah, I think a lot of this is related to um, being able to manufacture and then also being able, being able to keep help like people in the stores and things like that. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I definitely agree. I'm wondering, um, Tammy, how much just even like a gallon of milk is in Canada. Because honestly, Brenda, so I was going to say this, and I feel like even in the United States too, things have really gone up in price. Like a frozen thing of chicken breast used to be like five or six bucks, and now it's like 10 or 12. I mean, have you found that at the stores you're shopping at too? I didn't know if maybe that was just Aldi. No, I kind of noticed that. Recently, I just went and bought, I bought a lot of the, they're like pre-packaged frozen tender, chicken tenders. That's like what I buy, yeah. Yeah, and um, I was like, what happened here? Yeah, I, I was I was thinking the same thing the last time I bought them. It kind of went up. Um, Even like lunch meat what? is expensive too. So what, what I do is I order on Instacart and I do the pickup. So it's really nice because you can kind of see where your money is going to. Like you said, you're more, uh, if you go in the store, you're more prone to buy stuff you don't need. So. I mean, but, that's actually a great suggestion as far as like being very intentional. Cause I know I go into the grocery store and you end up getting a lot of things. Now, um, talking about making a grocery list. Um, so this is number one and number two, actually. Meal planning and make ahead grocery list. Those are my mm -hmm. first two. So we're going to incorporate both of those. Um, I think meal planning is one of my personal favorites because it reduces stress throughout the week, you know, because you don't have to think about what's for dinner. Even if it's just planning ahead a few days, and sometimes um, I'll just say, I'll to talk to my husband and say, hey, could you pick up what, such and such at the grocery store on your way home? Um, I think it saves money because you don't need to... Um, rely on last minute impulses or purchases or going out to eat because you don't have anything you know if you that's kind of like when we, me and my husband end up going out to eat is because I think oh man I don't have anything I'm not prepared mm -hmm. um, we actually did um, a recent live on meal prep made simple which we can post a link in the yeah I'll grab that link, link for you guys that. um and also the go-to shopping list for bariatric surgery patients since we're talking about um, grocery lists. So those two things, Brittany, if you don't care to pull those off, if people want those. And we have, um, and I'll grab off of our website, we have on our website our handouts, and it will include the grocery shopping list as well. So um, I'm grabbing that while she's doing that. Um, anybody else have anything to add about meal planning and make-ahead grocery grocery list. I think it's about staying accountable with the amount you want to spend. It's about avoiding getting distracted by impulse buying. It's about um, managing maybe your family's expectations on what they want. You know, maybe something's not on the list, so you're not going to purchase it. Um, and saving time inside the grocery store, which is always a big thing for me because I like to wander around the grocery store. I could be in there for hours. <laughs> My husband and my daughter both are always like, okay, just go in and get what you need. And I am not like that. I am like all around the store. <laughs> Sorry, I, no, I just muted myself because I was uh, typing and clicking. I didn't want to hear everybody to hear me. Uh, but my, must be a male thing because my husband's the same way. He wants to get in and get out and I'm more of a, you know, let's browse and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, grocery list. I'm typing in the grocery list um, link. Um, it's down here too. Oh, I just noticed I need to update the uh, latte swap links. So I will do that when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Well, well, we'll go ahead and we'll move on. So the first two is meal planning, like planning your meals out. The second one is making a make ahead shopping list and kind of maybe sticking to that a little bit. Where you shop, number three, is where you shop make it, made a difference. And we've kind of already talked about that a little bit. You know, um, 
So it's not so much about what you buy. It may be about where you buy it. And we know certain, certain stores can be more expensive than others. So just being mindful of that. Um, being Maybe one store might have better quality of meat while another's produce is better. Um, one thing that I've found, though, sometimes I... Uh, I offer convenience over price because sometimes it's just easier going to one store, but sometimes it is like sometimes you can find better quality products or cheaper products and other other things. Yeah, that's the only downside about Aldi is that they there's some things that they, I know that they're just not going to have. Um, and if you're really brand loyal, like toilet paper or paper towels, for instance, I don't like buying the cheap ones because they just, I, to me, it's worth a little bit more money to have a nicer quality product, especially toilet paper. <laughs> and Aldi usually has only one brand of toilet paper. So I know, okay, if I'm running out, then I, I'm not going to get it there. I'm going to go somewhere else and get it. Yeah, and actually that brings us in our fourth one, shopping generic versus, you know, price. But I do agree. There's some things that um, you and I, might, might want. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm not a brand snob by any means. You know, I most of my stuff, if you looked in my fridge right now, is, is off-brand. Because um, I think so most of Aldi sells is off-brand stuff. It's not like you know, um, brand name stuff. I think they do have some brand name stuff, but you're right. There are some commodities where I would prefer to buy a brand name, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. Hi, Misty. Well, it looks like a G GC or Gwen says hunt versus gather. I'm trying to think, explain there, explain what you mean. Maybe I'm trying to understand maybe what you're meaning by that, but I, I think too when you can actually say twenty to thirty percent is what when I researched this it, it said on purchasing generic versus other grocery items. So that just tells you, you know, you're you are sometimes paying for that bigger name brand. Um, and so a third saving a third means you could buy a third more groceries too. I mean that's one way to think about it. Um, so Surprisingly enough, some generic foods are the same in the manufacturing plants. My husband used to work in a manufacturing plant that sold cereal, mm -hmm. and they actually made, like, the same cereal that came out of the same machine was actually packaged in, like, three, four different labels. And one of them was a name brand, one of them was off-brand, so it's interesting you don't really like the same manufacturer maybe purchase maybe making products and just packaging them separately for mm -hmm. different places i don't know if anybody knew about that but have you heard that before Brittany? oh yeah yeah so and, that's, and that's for a lot of stuff too i mean uh cereal is a really good example but um what's another one mm -hmm. i can't think of it right now but why your husband wants to get in and get out of the store. Oh, <laughs> that's what GC's talking about. Is that what you're laughing about? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't laughing at what you were saying. I'm sorry. It just it struck me funny. Uh, well, <laughs> GC says refers to why your husband wants to get in and get out of the store. And we like to look around. It's caveman days. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Um, and Aaron says peanut butter. I have to agree on peanut butter. Like, I kind of like certain kinds of peanut butter. Maybe mm -hmm. I just haven't tried enough brands, but I feel like there is a difference there, too. Um, the next thing here is bring cash and commit to what you spend. So, have any of you guys ever done the Dave Ramsey program, which is financial peace? I think I've talk, talked about it before here. Yeah, you um, have. Yes, and so what it recommends is, is like basically going to the cash system where you actually bring in cash and have that available when you're buying your groceries. Um, that's one way to prevent you from overspending as opposed to swiping a card. I just love my card. Um, I mean, I use my debit card for everything, but it's um, it can be a way if you're tempted not to overspend. And then you can also pocket that extra cash. Um, 
we just recently, Brittany and I just recently went to the Bariatric Society Bariatric Retreat in San Diego, California. And um, I actually brought along cash, but I hardly spent any of my cash except on tips. I don't know about you, Brittany, but it was like, like you use your card for literally everything. Even the people yeah. on the premises were, um, we, we did some of our tips through Venmo. They were like, yeah, you can just swipe and do Venmo. And we were like, okay, <laughs> it was just easy. I think we're becoming more and more of a cashless system. Yeah, definitely. With grocery stores and with everything. Um, Missy said that seven. they did uh, Dave Ramsey too. My husband was more sure there was certain things we had to buy. Yes, we did Dave Ramsey, yes. What did you think about it, Misty? It's helpful. Like it, it was kind of life changing for me and my husband when we did it. I felt like it was, um, had some really good pointers on ways to save and focus and all of that and kind of get on the same page. Because if you're not on the same page with your significant other, it can be a little bit harder. Yeah. It took us a lot of years. Not that we weren't ever not on the same page, but there was a lot of things that we probably weren't cohesive about until up to the last few years. Um, the next thing is number six is limit grocery trips to twice a month. We are just talking about that. It does. I, I feel like it does help because you can kind of um, gauge. And I even told my husband the other day, I said, you know what? We need to be using up all the stuff in our pantry as opposed to just going out and buying more stuff because you kind of have stuff in there that you just you just haven't used. Do you do that? Does anybody else do that? Um, yes and no for me. Sorry, it's really bright today. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, it's yes and no. Uh, like there's some stuff that we go through, so I always pick up two whenever I'm there. Like chicken stock, for example. I'm not one of those people that makes your own chicken stock. If you are. Um, good for you, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, so anyways, I'll buy like two of those every time I go because I know that we, we use it almost every time we cook. That and like garlic or, uh, well, that's not really a pantry item. But uh, but then there are things that, uh, like those quick rice packets, we have like probably 12 of those in our pantry right now. And I was just thinking literally last night, I was like, why do I even buy these? <laughs> Like I usually have to, the one thing that I do is I'll go in and do like an assessment before I go grocery shopping. Does anybody yeah. else do that? I go in and make an assessment of what you have and what you need. Like um, take inventory. Like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Misty says very helpful. She's talking about the Dave Ramsey program, but how I saved my, for my surgery since insurance didn't cover it. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Because surgery is, is, paying for surgery is, um, is a lot out of pocket. So good for you. That's amazing. Um, it's how I started saving for my end of year taxes, how I started saving for Christmas, like I just, for, for travel, all those things. It makes it nice to have all that saved up. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is limiting shopping days um, may require buying in bulk. We kind of talked about that. That's under that same heading there as the grocery store, you know, buying a couple of times a month. Um, how about buying in larger warehouses? Where do you guys think about places like Sam? Sometimes I love, like we'll go there, but I end up spending so much when I go there. And sometimes I don't know because it's just the two of us and I end up buying a lot of stuff just because it's an emotional purchase. I'm like, ooh, that sounds really good. <laughs> well, it's like the psych, so it's like the psychology of it. They, are, they make you think that you're getting a really good deal. So you can't pass it up. That's why you, you know, you go in there and you see all these, these things and your brain kind of just goes on this haywire and it's like, you need it, you need it, you need it, but do you really need it? <laughs> no, and I, I totally agree. Like I said, it's just me and my husband in our house. So there are certain things from Sam's that I think is really helpful, like stuff that doesn't go bad, like our paper goods that you're talking about. I usually go there and buy that. Um, mm -hmm. Or uh, what's another one? Like their uh, their meat is really good too. You can get like a whole uh, beef tenderloin fillet, mm -hmm. um, and those are usually pretty inexpensive for how like how much meat you get. I mean, and then you can freeze it. So that's you know. But would I go like? Do I go shopping there on a regular basis? No. 
Just because it doesn't make sense for for me and my household. Now, if I had, you know, two kids and we were a family of four or five or whatever, then probably, yeah. It looks like, looks like Misty says, I buy protein shakes there. I've heard a lot of people say that because that, I guess you can Mm -hmm. kind of get better deals with protein shakes. Me and some supplements for my husband. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They have a lot of different options as far as protein shakes go too. Um, and that's kind of the neat thing whenever you have, like, you have a lot of different variety. I like having the variety. I like having the variety of some of their snack foods. They do have some healthy snack foods. Like, mm-hmm. um, the last time I went, I ended up buying some, um, different kinds of Greek yogurt, which I normally, I didn't even, hadn't, hadn't even seen at Walmart. I found them at Walmart now, but, um, some different kinds of forms of Greek yogurt, some, um, like little individually packed nuts, like that were kind of more, I felt like more healthier choice, but I like the individual packed on the nuts because otherwise you can sit there and you just keep eating and you don't realize how much you eat. Yeah. Um, and kind of and getting into that, that's kind of leads us into number seven, which is resisting the urge to shop while hungry. Mm-hmm. I've heard this actually. Do you feel like it's a problem for you? It is for me. Like, if I go in hungry, <laughs> it's not good. I Yeah, like, I'm not going to lie. I've been pretty busy this morning, so I have not eaten uh, lunch yet. And I'm <laughs> I'm really hungry right now. Uh, so if I were to go in a grocery store right now, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> or, even, or even pick out my groceries. Like I said, doing the pickup thing, I would suggest not doing that hungry either. <laughs> sounds good it's like pizza sounds good cookies sounds good candy baked goods um, it's usually when you're really hungry that you make not so good decisions too like you know the pizza cookies all of that stuff yeah like things that you might not buy if you were if your blood sugar was stabilized and you weren't hangry mm-hmm. is that what you call it you call i call it hangry, it hangry yeah <laughs> i'm not at that point yet but <laughs> Um, The next thing we have is, number eight, eat foods on hand before going back to the store. We kind of talked about that, you know, like the things in your pantry and the things in your your refrigerator. Um, Sometimes I feel like it's time to just do like major clean out. I don't know what people do who live in the city because when we do a major clean out, I just throw everything in a bucket. That sounds sounds bad, but I just throw stuff in a bucket that we haven't used. And we go out, me and my husband take a ride out to the woods and we just dump it for the animals to eat. Like, what do people do in the city? What do you do, Brittany? Do you just have, like, you just throw in your trash or your garbage disposal or what do you do? Are you talking about, like, food that's gone bad? Yeah, like, foods that you're not using. Like, you're wanting to clean up the refrigerator so you yeah. can see what food is good. Because you uh... want people know what foods you still have in your refrigerator and then in your pantry. And I do the same thing for my pantry. I'll go through and clean out anything that we're not going to eat, like stale chips or stale yeah. pepper, that type of thing. Honestly, we just throw we throw most of it away, but we're really good about eating our leftovers in our house because it is just the two of us. So usually whenever we make a meal, we make it big enough to where we can have, like, either get at least one more meal out of it. Um, so we're, I mean, we're pretty good about leftovers. We don't usually have a whole bunch of stuff to throw away. Well, but if I, I mean, I do know people that live in more like rural areas and they do the same thing as you because, because, well, because even if you throw it away, critters are still going to get into it yeah. and it, then it's just going to make a mess that you have to clean up. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. We burn, like we have, we, we do do trash pickup, but it's only every two weeks. And so we burn most of our trash, like 90% of our trash. Um, the only thing you can burn is bottles and we, mm-hmm. we recycle some stuff too. So um, it's amazing how much waste that we have. Like if you think about, like you said, you know, really one of the big things is, is learning how to cook yeah. for, for your family and that you don't have waste. To me, that's huge because um, if you're not a person that likes leftovers, then cooking. So for me, part of that of that adjustment has been going from having a having two kids at home to having no kids at home and being me and my husband. 
And when you go from making like huge pots of, I made a huge thing of vegetable soup that like could last us three weeks. <laughs> I should just give part of it away, I guess, or freeze Soup is just really easy to, to overdo, though. It really is. Because it, I mean, a little mm-hmm. that doesn't look like a lot, or I'm sorry, a lot looks like a little. Especially when you're doing vegetables, because you put yeah. this, that vegetable in, you know, and stuff, and all of mine were frozen, so it's, anyways. Um, the next thing is, is limit consumption of sugar and prepackaged foods, convenience foods. So, it's really helpful. And Brittany, when you were talking about using the app, to me, this kind of goes back to that. Either looking at what you're purchasing, being becoming more aware of where your purchases are going, or looking at your receipt to see what you bought. It can be an eye-opener on how much, like, the sugary snacks and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, is it really the case that eating junk food is cheap? Because probably not. Um, cost of apples to a box of ding dongs or frozen peas to a box of box of chi- bag of chips. Um, so not only can cookies and chocolates be more expensive than thought, they come can come with a hidden cost too. So maybe even leaving you hungrier. Um, so the app is called Instacart for anybody who's interested. Um, And it's really nice because, like I said, you pick out what you want. So it's kind of like a built-in grocery list. It's loading, or I'll show you here in a second. So here's all the stuff that's on my list for, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, here's the list of stuff that I have that um, I need to get next time I have to go to the store. So I usually, whenever I notice I'm low on something, I'll just go ahead and add it in here so I don't forget. Kind of like how you were talking about, like, of taking inventory or whatever. And then it's really nice because at the at the bottom it tells you what your total is. So my total right now is one hundred and sixty five dollars. So I'm I know that I'm under my budget because my like I said my budget is about two hundred dollars every two weeks. So about four hundred dollars a month. Um. So I know that I'm under budget right now, and there's usually only um, I think it's a two dollar fee for pickup. If you want it delivered to your house, then it it's like a ten ninety nine fee. But you know, for someone uh, who maybe lives alone and they can't get out all the time, deliver getting groceries delivered might be nice too. I did this whenever COVID was going on, and uh, <laughs> I just didn't want to go to the grocery store. <laughs> like I'm talking about, like I'm when COVID about- first happened. Yeah. But it's really nice, and the app is free itself, so you don't have to pay anything a month. And we are in the U.S. For someone asked, are you guys in the U.S. or Canada? We are. We are in the U.S. What were you saying, Brenda? Sorry. No, I was just. I was just kind of verifying what you were saying. You said if you go to the store, it's cheaper. Like if you do Instacart and go to the store and pick it up versus having it delivered, there's different prices range. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes they'll even have specials too. Uh, like I ordered so many dollars worth of groceries from Instacart that I got free delivery for a month. So that was really nice. Um, one other thing too that I found, like if we go on vacation and we're, we've are we done a couple of like family, big family vacations where we all will stay together in a big house. We're getting ready to do one in Colorado. And um, it, sometimes it's helpful to to kind of all get together as a big family. Like if you're doing um, a big family vacation, and when you get there, doing Instacart or doing a pickup, because it's it saves on getting into the store and being kind of overwhelmed. All the yeah. kids getting there, you have so many people in the mix. So sometimes that's kind of helpful too. And um, I know a lot of Walmart stores do this now too. A lot of stores have decided. I know a lot of our local stores that don't have apps, but they will allow you to actually um, email a list in because of, I guess, because of the whole COVID. I don't know if that's still a thing, if people are still doing that, but oh, I yeah. know, yeah, just a really lot helpful. Of, a lot of big name stores are doing it too. Like, um, I'm not sure about Walmart because to be honest with you, I try not to go to Walmart very much. Um, my, <laughs> my, 
my stepdad is a big union person, so we just were raised that, like, you just don't go to Walmart. <laughs> I don't personally have anything against it, but, uh, so, th I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things where I just, like, I, I just don't go there. I don't know. I don't think to go there. And plus, the only closest one is, like, 35 minutes away from my house, so it's kind of inconvenient. Um, mm -hmm. But I know Target does pick up. That's why I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else know of any other places that do pickup or services? Um, I think it's kind of funny because I was riding in a vehicle with somebody um, on one of my trips, and they said that they, so people who do Uber or, or Lyft, like who are drivers, will sometimes also do Instacart. So they'd have like, they have a sign up for yeah. whatever service they're offering. They could offer multiple services to make sure they stay busy enough. And one driver said, no, I can't do, he said, I just can't do both of those. I can't do them because then your car stinks like food. And I had to think about it. I'm like, yeah, that's true. Have you ever gotten into somebody's car, like an Uber driver or Lyft driver and their car stunk like some kind of, you can't even explain. Like, what is this? We kind of experienced that, didn't we, Brittany? Uh, it, it was like nail polish remover. It smelled like, it was so weird. And it was a guy too. <laughs> I mean, not that guys can't get their nails done. I mean. But it was nail polish remover, though. It wasn't... It was so weird. I don't know. <laughs> the whole time, Brenda and I were just sitting there trying to figure out what it was. <laughs> Goodness, Amy says, that saves me from impulse buying, doing the growth gro Yeah, gro gro That's gro another gro reason why I like to do it, too. And I, so I work from home primarily. Brenda does, too. Every once in a while, I will go into the ProCare Health office. They have an office. In, it's near St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and I'm a little over an hour away from the office, so I do go in, um, like once a week maybe, but primarily I work from home, so, um, that kind of gives me, like, my evenings and weekends to do my, my personal grocery shopping, and to be honest with you, I just don't, I don't like doing that because then the stores are really overcrowded, and there's not as less stuff to pick from, like the variety that we were talking about, everything's kind of picked over because a lot of people do their shopping then too. So once I found this app, it's really nice because you can schedule the pickup between, um, usually it's like a two hour window of a period of time. So then I'll just take my lunch break and I'll go run into town, they load it up for you and all you have to do is come home and unload it. It's perfect. And like yeah. you said, you don't buy stuff you don't need you know what you're spending, what your budget is. Um, it's just, it's really convenient. I like it a lot. Honestly, I don't know if I'll ever go inside a store again. <laughs> you know, I think even shopping, like Christmas shopping and stuff this mm -hmm. year, talking about You could do that. that. Yeah. Um, you definitely could. So one thing, too, on when we're talking about limiting consumption of certain type of convenience foods, one thing that I've noticed myself spending extra money on it is if you bring if you buy drinks like certain types of drinks like drink mixes or soda or um you know after bariatric surgery some programs don't even recommend you that you purchase or drink soda so i guess it's individualized or alcohol all of those things can make a difference on your grocery budget and not oh, saying yeah. that you should completely eliminate it but being aware of how much you're spending because you know a bottle of say whiskey could be 20 bucks and that's if your budget is 200 you know that could chip into your budget but it's all about where you want your money to go so just kind of being aware and conscious of how you're spending it can you buy when you're using those apps Brittany can you buy alcohol with those apps yeah you can so I've talked about this um, before in the past with Brenda I don't know if I've ever shared it on our Crowdcast channel but I uh, I like wine. That's my drink of choice. If, if we're talking about uh, alcoholic beverages, that's usually my go-to drink of choice whenever I'm home and I'm just, you know, chilling. Uh, and I really like Aldi's wine in particular because it's inexpensive and it's still, to me, it tastes good. Um, I know that probably some people are, are cringing right now, but it's what I like and it's it's inexpensive. So whenever I go to the grocery store, I try and keep a minimum of only four, four bottles 
And I know that sounds like a lot, but it's just because I like a variety. I'll get some of the white, I'll get some of the red, and it's $3.99. But even that, it adds up, like Brenda said. So that's why I try and limit myself no more than four bottles whenever I go in and make a trip. And on the app, you can purchase it. You just have to show them uh, your ID whenever you're there dropping off. They just ask for your date of birth, and then you just give them your driver's license. They verify it and scan it, and then they just start loading everything in your car. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing here I have is use coupons, rebates, grocery loyalty programs, sales ads, that type of thing. I think um, it's important to remember to, these are, this can be free money, but the problem is too, you kind of got to be careful not mm -hmm. to overuse them for stuff that you don't really need. You're just yeah. buying it because you have a coupon for it. I think that's, I've seen, have you guys ever seen the shows on TV where they have these people who are couponers and they yeah. have like extreme coupon, I think is what they call it. I kind of wonder sometimes like actually how much you have to spend. I guess they really do budget it. I don't know. If I they, find it. Here. Yeah. And I find it fascinating because I really don't understand how it works. But I mean, I've seen videos of people at like, more specifically, I think it happens at like dollar stores, like Dollar General, um, what's the other one? Dollar Tree, I think. Um, dollar General is a really popular one. But people will go in and they'll have like, they'll show them ringing everything up and it'll be like $500 worth of stuff at the dollar store. And I'm like, what are you buying? But, um, but then by the end of it, it's like their bill is like $22 and it's like, how? <laughs> I just don't. If, if we have any extreme couponers, uh, comment in the chat because I genuinely would love to know how. <laughs> uh, it takes time. It does. Time is, to me, time is money too. You know, if you're oh, yeah. spending two or three of your hours of your time that you could be doing something else. Now, if it's a hobby and it's just for fun and it's it's working and it's making you money in that way that you're able to either resell the products or you're able to use the products and, and, you know, save money. That's great. Um, but yeah. And it's, then it's, yeah. another thing I wanted to share with you guys, since we're talking about coupons is that this app that I shared with you, whenever you have something in your cart and it has a coupon, it will, can you see that at the top? Yeah, save one dollar instantly, or something yeah. five dollars off, or something. Yep. So that means that I have something in my cart that they currently have a coupon for, and then you just click the apply coupon button, and it applies it before checkout. Oh. Okay. So that That's saves you time. Awesome. That way, you're not like flipping through everything, cutting up, cutting them out. You know. Um, so if you use Instacart, are you picking from a specific store, Brittany? Yes. So you can. The way it works is you put in your home address. And it'll tell you which stores in your area are, are participating. So another popular one that I use is Schnucks. Target's on there. Instacart is, or I'm sorry, Aldi is on there. What else is on here? Shop. Uh, Dollar Tree, Michael's, Family Dollar, Five Below, Sam's Club, Walgreens, Target, Petco, Fryer Tucks. I mean, there's, it's a whole list. So I would definitely check it out if you haven't already. It's life changing. <laughs> yeah, do you tip? Do you have to tip? Um, so the delivery service, there is at the very end after you've gotten all of your things um, and you can kind of see what you have. Um, you can, and, and also like how quickly they gave their delivery and how helpful they were, all that stuff. So afterwards, it's kind of like Uber whenever, um, so you already are paying them for their services, but then afterwards, after it's all been said and done and you have everything, you have the option to tip them more. Um, so usually I do, I usually do 20%, I think, 20 or 25, somewhere in there. But it's nice because it... Uh, pick up, usually I don't because I just don't. 
And, well, I think it's because there's not an option to tip them, like, on the app. So if you wanted to tip them, you probably could give them cash, but I just don't ever have cash on me. As you know, <laughs> we were in California together, and I did not have any cash at all. <laughs> She's a cashless kind of girl. I understand. <laughs> I think it's just my generation. We just don't. And, and I trust me, I hear it from my parents. You really should have cash on you. <laughs> I have a checkbook still. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> like, how often do people even use their checkbooks? I could probably count the number of checks I actually write out. Everything is either automated or, I mean, it just. The only thing I write a check for good. every month is our water bill. And the reason why I don't do that is because they, for some reason, their system's just kind of old and they don't allow uh, electronic payment. If they allowed electronic payment, I probably wouldn't write a check for anything. So, <laughs> a lot of younger people that are even younger than me don't even know how to write a check, which I think is crazy. Huh. Interesting. Like, my, my brother's generation, he's never uh -huh. wrote a check in his entire life. I don't think he even has a checkbook. And he is 24. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I wonder if Madison uh, has ever wrote a check before. Because she's kind of in that age group. Yeah. I don't know. If she. I, I know she has an a account, a checking account. But I don't know if she writes ever, ever. I don't know if she's ever written a check. See, my it's husband, like he never had a checking account. Well, I mean, he had a checking account. He never had a checkbook until after mm -hmm. we got married. And I made him get a checkbook. <laughs> That's funny. Let me, let me let me kind of go over our little list again and yeah. see here. I curious. Okay, so the the big things that we kind of talked about is setting a budget, you know, and 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 being aware of what you want to spend. And if that's something, if you're wanting to save money, and we talked about average costs per family and looking at average versus what you're spending might be helpful. Um, the number one idea or strategies for, you know, cutting your grocery bill is meal planning. Number two is making a grocery list and planning ahead. That could be using the app like Brittany talked about. Um, number three is making, you know, being aware of where you shop can make a difference, you know, wh whether it's a cheaper grocery store versus a more expensive and maybe some products may be uh, more high quality at different places. So where do you shop? Kind of be more intentional there. Um, looking at your brands of what you spend and buying generic could save you um, a third of what you're spending. Number five is bringing cash and committing to what you're spending. If you're really, really, really wanting to make sure you don't overspend and you have such a temptation to do that, that's just one idea. Number six is limiting grocery trips to a certain number a month, maybe twice a month. Um, and in that also, you know, maybe limiting shopping day, days to buying in bulk. Like if you're wanting to buy in bulk, only do that so many times a month. Uh, also resisting the urge, number seven is resisting the urge to shop while hungry. <laughs> number eight is eating foods on hand before going back to the grocery store. So eating what you have or doing a evaluation of your pantry and your refrigerator. Number nine is limiting consumption of prepackaged foods and looking at the cost versus the benefit of those things. Um, and that kind of goes also in with like eliminating certain types of drinks, sugary drinks and that type of thing, um, sticking with more whole ingredients. Um, number 10, the very last one is potentially using coupons, rebates, grocery loyalty programs or sales ads to help you spend to save on otherwise money. So I think that's all I have. How about you, Brittany, you have anything else? No, just I, um, I'm a sucker for some good rewards too. Uh, like, wow. Wal like Walgreens, I'll go there and get little things, you know, that I don't want to like go to the grocery store. Cause for some reason, smaller drugstores, to me, it's just, it's more convenient instead of going into a big store and trying to find what you need. 
uh, and I love their reward system. It, um, it kind of like it, it's kind of a surprise too. I like going to Walgreens too, Brittany, because yeah. it's such an easy just walk-in store. And um, they and all of the stores of are universal for the most part, so you know where everything is. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like you have to guess. But uh, what were you saying? It's just the same. Like you'll get up to the to the counter and they'll say, you know, you have five dollars or ten dollars in rewards, and it's kind of nice, especially when you're buying. I buy a lot of my cards there because our yeah. Walgreens is like centrally located, um, yeah. and it's an easy stop in to go buy a birthday card or a wedding card or something like that. So it's it's nice to be able to like stop in, and it's sometimes I get my cards for free because of the rewards. That, the rewards program, yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of my birthday cards there, a lot of um, gift cards they have anytime I'm getting a gift card for a gift. You know, they have like that whole kiosk thing filled with gift cards, I mean, everywhere. And it's so much easier to go into a Walgreens and see if they have a gift card than it is to go to an actual store. Mm -hmm. um, and I buy a lot of makeup from there too, like drugstore makeup. Because yeah. that's a, it's a really good way to rack up those reward points. But yeah, if you, so if you haven't uh, already signed up for some reward points at Walgreens, I would definitely uh, urge you to do that because it's a really good deal and it's free. I mean, it's nothing to sign up. So <clears throat> I know we're talking about grocery bills, but uh, this week is Black Friday. Yeah. And so how many of you guys like to shop Black Friday shopping? I think of almost like doing it for myself as much as I like doing it for mm -hmm. everybody else because you can save so much and you can get a lot more for your money. So another little budget keeper. And also, Brittany, can we share? I guess I was going to say we happening. should share with them. <laughs> yeah. So probably going to be having a Black Friday sale and I just say watch for it. Can we share what it's going to be? Yeah, I'll go ahead and put the um, the details in the chat box for you guys. Um, it's not going to technically start until tomorrow. Uh, the email that's going out says Friday, though, so I, I guess we'll say Friday. It starts Friday and it goes until Monday because, as you know, a lot of people... Uh, are a big fan of Cyber Monday too, so we want to make sure that it went through the whole weekend and you guys have plenty of time to save. Um, so we, as I said, we are going to send out an e-blast. I believe that's going out first thing Friday morning. Um, it's going to have all the details, but I'll go ahead and share them with you guys too. So if you're watching this after the fact, um, just know that the sale is from Friday until end of day Monday. So what you're going to do is you're going to use code THANKFUL, and I'm going to type that in there too. Um, it's not case sensitive. You can do all caps, you can do lowercase, whatever. And that, that will give you 20% uh, off a purchase of $50 or more. I'm sorry, 15% off a purchase of $50 or more. And then 20% off a purchase of $100 or more. And you also can qualify for sh free shipping too, if it's over $75. So you can save in a bunch of ways. <laughs> As healthcare costs are so low, we rarely ever have those types of savings. Yeah, we really don't. I mean, it's like 15 and 20% are big for... And actually, if you're looking for a gift, everyone, I've not met one person that doesn't like our calcium chocolate bars, and those are a seasonal product. So um, if you need a good gift idea, just swipe a couple bags and use that code THANKFUL and it'll save you some money too. Yeah. Thanks, Brittany. And if you guys, um, I'm also going to put at the bottom here our website, the ProCare website. So then if you want to get onto the website, you will have that. At the bottom here, it should be showing up our sponsor, ProCare. And we can type it in the chat box as well. So. Um, while Brittany's doing that, I'll type the website. So I think that's everything. And that code will only work for our website. It will not work for, um, cause we do sell our products on other sites too, but that will only work for ProCare Health. ProCare Now. Mm -hmm. 
Well, everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving and um, have have blessed time with your family, with your friends. Um, take care, and we will see you back next week. We'll see on you on Wednesday. the next one. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm.